the Nauvoo Temple was one of six public works projects in Nauvoo. So one day in ten, uh, people were actually expected to give some kind of tithing or contribution. Uh, many people had skills. And uh, the men that had skills, they were particularly needed on the building projects that were going on in Nauvoo. So those with skills were pulled off such things as uh, digging ditches, you know, to make sure that we're moving Nauvoo from kind of a swamp town. As far as being a carpenter on the temple, that would have actually been a wonderful job because it meant that uh, when you could be uh, at the largest public works building, actually it was the biggest building up and down the Mississippi River since New Orleans, and it also meant that you had a chance to do something that would last uh, for a great length of time. There was a sense of spirit. If you worked on the temple, that's where Joseph, when he gave one day in ten, that's where he liked to work. And so you can imagine, most of the saints would crowd around, and some days it was hard to get m much done because a diarist, Wandel Mace, would say it was not unusual for somebody to say, uh, Joseph, how about talking to us about the gospel? And suddenly they would put down their tools and go to work. But when, uh, when Joseph died, the temple walls were only a story and a half high. And so then after he died, Brigham Young took people off of other public works projects, such as the Nauvoo House, also spoken of in Section 124, like the Nauvoo Temple. And he put them all on the temple. And so if you were really a good carpenter, it meant you actually had people that you were supervising so they could be better carpenters because that temple was going to be finished before the saints left. And so when someone says they were a carpenter on the temple, the question goes, was it during Joseph's time? If Joseph's time, you're a skilled worker. If it's after Joseph's time, then you're supervising others under you because you're working very fast to make it happen.